Well, boys and girls, and children of all ages, it's March, so that means the madness has begun. And this has been a long time coming. I've been kind of pushing this off, you know, for other reasons. But it's about that time. March Madness, it's finally almost here. It's finally almost here and I cannot wait you know the way things have been going in the basketball world in the college basketball world at least you think you know you think you have everything figured out but then you don't at the same time you know like I don't think I expected some of these things the, the way they've been you know with a with the top five that includes uh, number one Houston again, you know, I, I don't think I expected that. I don't think I expected a top ten, you know, Texas squad right now. Really, a really good one in a gauntlet of a Big Twelve. We'll talk about all that in a moment, you know. But honestly and truly, we're in the best time of this year. Conference tournaments started up on Monday. Um, with some smaller conferences and you look at things in the context uh, let, let's start with the American first let's start there um, you look at things in the context of the American you know you see Houston again the you know the number one team in the country team with only two losses on the year one the Temple strangely enough and the other to Alabama you know you see this Houston squad, you see that they, you know, again, the American just hasn't been very good. I mean, you look at the records of the rest of the teams across the board, and it looks kind of, ooh. But, for the most part, for the most part, Houston should be fine with getting a number one seed, you know. there, There is potential for another team from the American to make the, you know, tournament is probably Memphis but in any case uh, anybody else from the American right now um, they would have to get the auto bid you know and it's gonna be some trouble if you know they have to go through Houston again who again the one weird loss to Temple that's the only weird one um, I can't tell you about the Atlantic 10 right now I mean don't get me wrong Fordham big surprise out there with Fordham being a 20 plus win team but uh, that's about it from the 810 you know I can't really say anything too much about the 810 because I haven't watched any 810 basketball all year long um, the ACC is crazy crazy stuff it looks like it will come down to the final day of the regular season at least, you know, the last major day. There is games on Sunday, but the last major Saturday of the season, you know, Miami, Virginia, Pittsburgh, Duke, and Clemson are all sitting in position to be in position. And really, you know, you look at the squads here from the ACC, you just, you just don't see too much, you know. You know, you have Miami, you know, really interesting team, Pitt, Again, who has resurfaced into a basketball, you know, team that is really good. You know, Clemson, you know, despite the fact that they, you know, kind of bid down a little bit, they've resurfaced, you know, gotten back up and are in position to be in position. Of course, you know, Duke is going to make the NCAA tournament. You know, they're, they're Duke. They're going to make the NCAA tournament regardless, but... Really, I think there's about six ACC teams. I know you're thinking, wait, what about North Carolina? Come on now. North Carolina? The same North Carolina was preseason number one, but has only one quad one win. Yeah. I, I, I really don't think, you know, uh, North Carolina's going to have to win, you know, maybe a couple more games to really get to hammer it home. Why we had this thing? Because again, they brought everybody back, and they just haven't been able to. They just haven't been able to do it, you know, this year, and it's just it's just been real sad to look at, to watch North Carolina be the way they've been. 
Up at the Big 12, the gauntlet known as the Big 12, you know, you're going to get at least six teams and you're gonna get at least six teams and I know some people are saying well maybe you know you get Oklahoma State and West Virginia in, and maybe you Texas Tech too you know and even Oklahoma State you know I mean the whole conference you know technically could just make the big, the, the big dance they the whole conference could but really I don't think that's going to happen at this point um, the Big 12 will most likely, if things hold the way they hold, you know, it will come down to Texas and Kansas on the final day of the regular season. Now, of course, you know, again, college game day has went to Duke, North Carolina twice this year. They've been in the studio for like two, you know, two weeks. During the first couple of weeks of the season, they were supposed to be on the road, you know, and then they went to Duke, North Carolina twice, which makes no sense. Now you have top 10 matchups galore on the last day. You know, top top 15, top 20 matchups galore on the last day of the regular season, the last big day anyway. Again, like I said, Saturday's the last big day. You still have games on Sunday. Um, and then the rest of the conference, again, just a gauntlet. You know, K-State, Baylor, TCU, you know, Iowa State, they should be comfortable, you know. Uh, Iowa State, all, all they really need is like one more win, you know, really. Yeah, but the rest, but like Oklahoma State, you know, again, you know, the conference beat up on each other pretty badly. And I just can't say with certainty that there's going to be more than six. And all six of these teams, you know, Kansas, Texas, Kansas State, Baylor, and TCU, Iowa State, you know, at, at least Kansas, Texas, Kansas State, Baylor are all going to be very high seeds, you know. You know, based on the bracket preview we got, you know, all four of those teams are going to be very high seeds. TCU kind of waiting a little bit, you know, in, in in the trenches. Iowa State as well. You know, they've been losing a couple games. They've lost four straight. Um, but still, I think at least six teams from the Beach Well. Definitely, definitely, you know, strongest conference top to bottom. But once again this year, it has been the strongest conference for like five or six years now. I'm, I'm just going to be keeping it real with you. Um, Big East. How about Marquette? It's no longer Villanova's conference. It is Marquette's. Marquette won the Big East. You know, the Big East regular season title. And it's good for them. Good for Marquette. You know, Shaka and company have really done what they needed to do. And, you know, UConn resurging, you know, with... You know, other teams like Xavier, Providence, and Creighton kind of fell off the wayside a little bit. And so did UConn really too. But, you know, Marquette, big time stuff right there. Um, big 10. Purdue, again, one of the other teams really in contention, you know, for a number one seed. Again, Kansas is the one that's probably going to get, you know, number one seed depending on if they beat Texas. Now, Texas beats Kansas, takes care of TCU. Um, while that game is going on right now, TCU and Texas are playing at the moment, you know, playing at the moment. But, um, you know, a Big 12 team is going to get the, is going to get a one seed, you know. I, I would, I think, you know, probably the number one overall seed goes to Kansas if, they beat Texas because again they have all the quad one wins necessary. You know they have all the they have all the big wins necessary. Because again, the Big Twelve is just a gauntlet. But Purdue in the Big Ten, and then you, you see teams like Northwestern, surprisingly, you know, jumping up and saying, "Hey, we want the Big Ten title, regular season title anyway." You know, you you wonder, you know, what's going to happen in the Big Ten because it, once again, it's the Big Ten. They put a lot of teams in the tournament, but a lot of those teams don't pan out. You know, with Sack Eddie, with, you know, all these other guys on Purdue, you think, you know, this is a team that is just made for success. And I think they might be made for that success as well. But the rest of the conference right now, you know, again, Michigan is third in the Big Ten. But they don't have any other good wins. Again, 17 and 12 ain't going to cut it. You know, 
Indiana just lost last night to Iowa. You know, and it looks like we're going to get Indiana and Iowa and Maryland, you know, resurging, looking like a look like team that was winning the Big, Tw- the Big Ten, you know, like their first couple of years in the Big Ten. You know, Michigan State still in this thing. Wisconsin doesn't have a resume either. You know, just absolutely dismal 16 and 12. That's not going to get it done. You know, there's just a lot of teams. And then there's like teams like Illinois, Rutgers, you know, in their Penn State, you know, that are just kind of sitting around, twiddling their thumbs, you know, unsure of what exactly do. And then, you know, there could even be potential for one of the bottom three of Nebraska, Ohio State, and Minnesota to steal one bit away. But I highly doubt that. We're probably going to get one of those 11. In the CAA, it really... It's Charleston or bust. If if Charleston, you know, can win the CAA, you know, um, the conference tournament anyway, that that'll help them out, you know, because otherwise they don't have the resume at all. They don't have the good wins, you know. CAA, you know, technically they didn't even win the CAA. They were given the two seed in the tournament. You know, so we we could see two CAA teams. Maybe one of them is Hofstra. Maybe one of them is one of the other CAA teams. But for the most part, you know, you look at it as Charleston stands to lose. Same thing with Florida Atlantic in Conference USA. It is FAU's to lose. Now it could be my UNT Mean Green sneaking up in there and giving FAU, you know, you know, at large. That could be one possibility, but we'll see about that. We'll see in the CUSA tournament as things go on. Um, Other conferences really to look at. Um, Let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Oh, yeah, what about the MEAC? MEAC's actually not that bad. You know, the MEAC has five teams over 500. I just wanted to point that out because somebody else pointed it out. And I think that's really cool because, you know, usually the MEAC would have, you know, a bunch of teams like barely hanging in there. And then one team at the top that's dominating the conference, you know, with an actual better record than the rest of them. But with five teams over 500, that makes for a much more compelling thing going on there. Missouri Valley, you already know Arch Madness is going to be insane with with this conference strengthened. As a basketball conference, you know, now you look at things and, you know, even little Evansville, who only has eight wins, no, wait, five wins on the season, my bad, could get it because Arch Madness is crazy. It's the prelude to the madness. So, you know, Bradley and Drake, you know, Bradley won the regular season title. But we'll see because there are just, there's just a lot of good here. There's a lot of fun here in the Missouri Valley. Mountain West. How about, how about the Mountain West? Um, looks like it's going to be decided on the last day of the regular season as well. Boise State just beat San Diego State as well, which is really interesting. So, you know, it's going to be it's going to be insane. You know, Nevada's also there. Utah State's in there. Um, New Mexico, keep an eye on them. So, you know, I think the Mountain West will have multiple bids. It's just how many, you know. And the Mountain West has gotten multiple bids the last couple of years, and it hasn't really worked out for them either. Kind of like how it hasn't worked out for the Big Ten. But uh, we'll find out. We'll find out what happens. In the Pac-12, well, suddenly things just got interesting. You know, Arizona State beat Arizona on an insane buzzer beater. You know, a couple days ago, USC has resurged, and Arizona and UCLA are fighting for maybe one seed. UCLA doesn't have, you know, the greatest resume out there, but it's still it's still a good one, and they technically won the Pac-12. You know, US, UCLA has won the Pac-12, the regular season title anyway. Um, Arizona again, you know, it is quite unfortunate for them, 
But hey, they can still get themselves one Z too, I think. You know, Arizona has a little bit better of a resume. You know, they played better opponents throughout the season. I'm talking about the non conference, you know. You know, UCLA has kind of blitzed the rest of the Pac twelve along with Arizona in a way, although Arizona has three more losses in the Pac twelve, but it is what it is. Um See, so yeah, UCLA is another team that could get one seed. You know, again, they returned a lot of their guys from last year as well. We talked about that, you know, earlier in the season when I was able to make more college basketball content, stuff like that. In the SEC, it's Alabama's show and no one else's. Alabama has won the SEC, you know. For now, at least, that they they won the SEC. They beat Auburn and won the SEC tonight. So good on Alabama. Yeah, there's a little bit of controversy with Alabama, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, with Brandon Miller and whatnot. But uh, it's fine. It's fine. You know, you, we're not even going to talk about that because the media has talked about that extensively, and I did not want to talk about that. But hey, when you got teams like A&M, Tennessee, you know, good old Kentucky, Vanderbilt of all teams, Missouri of all teams, I think we're in pretty good position to be in position in the SEC. You know, pretty good bunch of teams making the tournament. I think there may be a couple more like, I don't know, like Auburn or maybe Mississippi State could make this thing. You know, maybe Arkansas as well could make this thing interesting. March Madness, but we'll find out as as time goes on. Then let's see anything else. Uh oh yeah, Oral Roberts. Could they run the table and you know win the Summit League, you know, conference tournament as well? Could they run the table there? Because they went 18 and 0 in the Summit League. We'll see if they can run the table. We'll see. Uh oh yeah the West Coast Conference yeah 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 it's not you know it's this isn't the same Gonzaga team you know I thought it was gonna be that was winning you know maybe losing like one game a year they've lost five this year uh, technically Gonzaga won the WCC by beating St Mary's in the last day of the regular season. And another top 20 matchup between the two of them. Clearly, Gonzaga and St. Mary's are going to make the tournament regardless. Um, you know, WCC bracket is the best bracket. You know, a smaller conference could buy again. I don't. I don't care if you know Gonzaga. You know, isn't you know. You know, is a big fish in a small pond for a conference. This. It, even if it were a down year like it kind of has been for them, you know, this is the type of conference tournament smaller conferences should have. They should have these, you know, where it's bracketed to where it's very favorable to the top teams or just don't have a tournament at all. But you can't, you can't not have a tournament. You know, even the Ivy League relented and said, we're going to have one. There could be another team from the WCC that steals, you know, a bid potentially. And I think it might be like Santa Clara, Loyola Marymount, you know, one of those two or anybody else from the WCC. And then, um, uh, oh yeah, New Mexico State. They're not playing the rest of the year, by the way, you know. Um, for reasons that we won't get into, so it's a lot. It's a lot when it comes to college basketball right now. It's a lot, and with the way the final day of the regular season is going to go, it's going to be one hell of a day. The for the, for the, for the final big Saturday, anyway. Uh, as far as the rest of the games go, you know, the Sun Belt Tournament, Missouri Valley Tournament, you know. Some of these tournaments have already started, and they're going to keep going all the way up until March 12th. So when it, it's time 
when it's that time again, I'm going to bring you my brackets. This time I'm actually going to be able to bring you my brackets by screen sharing, you know, and doing all that to get these brackets, you know, out and I'm watching going to be it's got it's probably going to be wrong. My brackets will be wrong, I guarantee you that. But hey, it's it's it was me putting me in the effort, so Until Caitlin Clark shoots a three from, you know, 500 feet away or something like that. And, South, and you know, South Carolina probably wins the Women's National Championship. I'm just going to say that right now. With Aaliyah Boston, you know, I'm just going to say that right now. I've only watched two women's games all year. Uh, yeah. In any case, that's what I got. Hopefully I can finally get that XFL, USFL vid out tomorrow. Maybe. I've been I've been pushing it back so many times. Um, that's all I got. Y'all take care. Have a good Wednesday night.